Welcome to the city that was buried alive. Right behind me here is the city of Pompeii. This ancient Roman city was completely frozen in time when a nearby volcano blew its top off and with that came ashes, pumice, and molten lava rushing down the mountain at nearly 100 miles per hour. And so all of the people living here in Pompeii unfortunately didn't stand a chance. So today we're gonna be exploring some of the memories left behind and some of the tragic reminders of what happened that day in 79 AD. Just 1,940 years ago, feels like it's yesterday, this was a hustling and bustling Roman town. It was a port city, so you had tons of sailors coming through, you had a really strong economy, and with that, lots of entertainment for sailors. So, let your mind wander what that could possibly mean. What do Romans do anyways? Drink. Drink. I have sex. <laughs> accurate. A city known for expensive hugging. Lots of women yes. offering services. It was a vacation destination, it was apparently. A, mm -hmm. Lots of rich people will come here. Yeah. Spring break. Yeah, spring break. When the volcano erupted, some of the first things to come down were the roofs. Basically, you would have had so much ash piling up that eventually the roofs could no longer take the weight and they would just give right in. And so a lot of people actually didn't die from the lava. It's not like you would imagine it in the movies. They would have died either by being flattened by the buildings collapsing on them or it would have happened from just the inhalation of all the gases, the poisons that come out of the volcano. It's a little bit eerie. Aside from all the tourists, this place is a shell of what it once was. And it all came to a quick and abrupt end when that guy back there lost his temper. Not the tourists, but the, the volcano. And today we are joined by my buddy Krill. He's come to uh, help us shoot. So he's helping us with those secondary shots to tell a beautiful picture of Pompeii. And if you didn't notice, yes, there are a lot of people here. We got here at 11. Our goal was to make it a nine. It gets really, really busy. Another one of the ways the Romans show their advanced city planning is this right here. The main reason for this is because when it would rain, it would basically act as like a little river that would clear out the streets, keeping everything clean for this rather big city. And these stones would allow you to cross when the rain was coming through and the water was filling up this road. Wow, guys, it's truly incredible how well all of the ashes have held up this historical site. I mean, just look at this. It's not my proudest joke, but to be honest, there was worse ones that didn't make the video. That's Pompeii. Even the Romans were true believers in GTL, gym, tan, laundry. Right now, we are in a laundromat where basically a lot of the town, or at least the elite, the more wealthy people would have brought their clothing to be cleaned out. And it says here they cleaned it using clay and urine questionable cleaning products, but I guess you had a limited selection back then. It's quite impressive because you still see so much detail all around us. Like you can see some of the paintings that were on the walls. Usually people didn't have much furniture inside their houses yeah. or like establishments like this ones, and that's why they will decorate the walls a lot with murals oh. and graffitis and that's why you see all those things there. Yeah. Guys, that's incredible. You can see the ancient cooking tools that they would have used, pots and pans. It's been going for years. It's shocking that the pots and pans from 1,940 years ago literally look identical to what I have in the kitchen. This is how you can see how beautiful some of the interior design was in the Roman ages. This right here was the home of one of the most influential people in all of Pompeii. And if you take a look here, you'll see the insane detailing from the floor. It's like a mosaic all the way to, well, there's a staircase over there bringing you up two floors. There's three stories in this building. And apparently, Kathy said, this used to mean beware of dog. All right, where are my history freaks at? So, as I mentioned before, Pompeii, population of roughly 20,000. With that though, they had an amphitheater that could literally sit the entire city population. I wonder if they had concerts. Actually, Pink Floyd played here. I'm not joking, I'm actually serious. Are you In serious? 1971, I just read it online. No. I'm, I'm serious. Wait, so you can back up my facts? I've seen that Pink Floyd has played here. Facts backed up. Okay. I'm the fact master. I believe it. So this is where our fellow gladiators would have come down just before getting ready for their battle through this tunnel here. You can only imagine if you'd come down here, you'd hear the crowds roaring. Christian, lost the blanc, spill the blood. Are you not entertained? Hit that like button. No. Slay that like button. It's actually the world's oldest stone building. 
All right, we know you're there. There's actually different seat sizes, so there's a hierarchy. The wealthier, the more important people would typically sit closer to the front with bigger seats, and the slaves, and I hate to say this, but usually the women would go all the way to the back, back in the day. It's no longer like that anymore, people. Don't get mad at me, that's just how it was. <laughs> that's the best thing I ever heard. Did you hear that little kid? Can we go home? <laughs> and this right here is the Forum of Pompeii, meaning the public square. People would do trade here, there'd be markets, there'd be tons and tons of people. I have bad news. I found a dog. No! This is the saddest thing here. El Perito was killed by the flames. Merciless Vesuvius. So you guys can see there, they actually have a little fundraiser to bring him back to life. Uh, if you have any change when you visit, just throw it in there and yeah. Get well soon, my friend. Oh my gosh, I just heard one of the funniest things. There was a tour guide with like probably three or four uh, seven-year-olds and the seven-year-olds were looking at the dead body and they're like, what happened? And they're like, that's little Tommy. And they're like, he was eating and then the volcano exploded and the lava came and got him. And they're like, wow. And they're like, yeah. And then the tour guide tells them a lesson out of it. He's like, so the lesson is make sure you eat your food fast and don't eat too much. And the kids are all like, oh, okay. You should tell me that. Yeah, I eat so slow. So one of the reasons the left behind remnants, the memories of what Pompeii was are so graphic and so well known across the world are because the bodies that were left behind actually show the emotions, the fear, and the positions that these people were in in their final seconds of life are the positions that we see here today. And if you look at this one right here, you see somebody that's basically huddled up trying to protect themselves and their hands protecting their face. You can see the fear without seeing any of the facial details. The body language says it all. The ashes all came down from Vesuvius, completely covering the city, leaving about a 20-foot layer of ash over top of Pompeii. And with that, it covered over people. And so when people were covered up by the ashes, all of the human flesh, the organs, all that disintegrated. But what was left behind was the bones and a gap in between the ash layer. And so what archaeologists did when they started to find this area was they filled that area with plaster, and that's how you get this very human-like outline, because that was the void left behind in the ashes. So little history is actually personable. You can't really read a book and feel what they're feeling, but when you see this, you feel like you're there. It takes you right back to 79 AD when all of Vesuvius was going crazy. And that right there. We got new fans. Oh, yeah, yeah. Team Get Lost. I got you, bro. Team Get Lost is grown by the day. Of course. Once you break away from all of the crowds and find some of the side streets here, you can see how this was like a whole neighborhood just full of life. And to see it here today, a complete ghost town, it's kind of a cool experience, I'm not gonna lie. Every video I work on is a little different from the last, but one thing they all have in common is a lot of footage, like 50 terabytes over the past three years of shooting. But despite having so much footage, I always find a few missing holes in my story, and that is where today's video sponsor is such a game changer. Today I want to tell you guys about Storyblocks, they are my go-to place for copyright free footage to help me find those missing pieces, those missing shots that maybe I didn't have, and it allows me to have access to a plethora of footage that that have been shot by other shooters. You could literally go to their website today and type in Pompeii and from there you have a large selection of shots made available to you completely copyright free, meaning that you can continue to monetize your video. It's a game changer and I've been using them for over a year now. So guys, if you wanna check it out, the link is down below and let's get back to the video. So to tell you guys the full story, we cannot just show you Pompeii, we also need to make our way to the top of the volcano that froze time on Pompeii. It's actually extremely surprising to see that we're no more than two, three kilometers from the base of the volcano, and yet people have decided to make this their home. You see families here, kids, whether I would live here or not, probably not, but uh, kudos to them. Guys, we made it to the volcano. Look how beautiful it is down there. Oh my gosh, the lava is insane. <laughs> Do you want to tell them what happened? It was close. It's close. It closed at 5 and we got yeah. here at 5.40. We had no clue. Sometimes we make <laughs> the mistakes for you so you don't have to experience them. But 5 p.m. is the time they shut. But 
it's not all losses. The footage here is mind-blowing. And to be honest, I think that's the better view of it, is not going to be actually standing on the ridge. Yes, it would have been cool, and maybe I'm making a few excuses because I have no other choices. But uh, from the upper parking deck, 30 minute hike up to the top there. And the good news is we're going back to our Airbnb where we've stayed for three nights now. So Naples, if you don't already know, is kind of like the Bangkok of Europe, is how you put it, which yeah. is so accurate. The of Europe. And yeah, let's go back there and get some food because Naples is the birthplace of so many amazing foods from Italy. And one of them in particular is pizza. One other thing you need to know if you're coming to Italy, renting a car, well, we almost didn't rent a car because apparently you need your international driver's license even if you have your proper driver's license from outside of the EU. So yeah, something to know. If you're outside of the EU, bring your international driver's license or just find a sketchy dude that's willing to rent you a car without it. Yeah, somehow we got one. Naples now and this is apparently one of the most dangerous cities in all of Italy. We are definitely sensing the edginess to the city of Naples but I want to show you one of the ways that you see some of the chaos and it's how you park your car. So I basically just slotted in here but what I really want to show you is on this side because this is your typical Napoli park job. The level of I don't give a shiz is off the charts here. <laughs> this guy backed his car into the pipes. <laughs> you don't have a Napoli car until the front end of your bumper is scratched, the side of your door is keyed, and the back end is cracked. This is how you do it in Italy. And we are back to our Airbnb. This is what 80 US a night gets you for uh, being in the center of Napoli. Shoot, shoot till you drop. <laughs> That's the lifestyle. So, yeah. It's super tight living, um, not necessarily our place, our place is okay, but once you go out into the streets, I mean, it's insane how tightly compacted the city is. In fact, it is the most densely populated city in all of Europe. Pretty crazy. But we want to make the most of the last hour of sunlight and then go get some of the best pizza in the world because, well, it comes from Naples. That's where it was invented. So, let's get out of here. And let's go explore. One thing that's really interesting about Naples is that the life of Naples is on the street. You'll see so many people just hanging around outside. And that's true for our Airbnb area, like that gentleman that was outside. Even though we didn't know a thing he was saying, he kept insisting on saying more and more and more. And like, he just wanted to have a conversation even though we couldn't reciprocate. Giuseppe, so cute. It's He's Giuseppe. my friend now. But the whole neighborhood just came out and started chatting and you could see them like having conversations across even balconies. People on, even people on the street will approach us to try to explain us things and we were mm -hmm. like, we don't speak Italian. <laughs> I will say that like, this is a place that's edgy. There's a lot of litter around, like it's definitely a very chaotic side of Europe and never how I ever imagined Italy. But it's kind of a cool spot to see if you're looking to see some of the less visited sides of Italy. We've eaten here three nights here, in a row like, and the pizza here, the pasta, like, it's just... The mm. Yeah, if you're ever in Naples, try out Lombardi, 1892. Pizza, we got the best spaghetti I've ever had. Eight euros, seven euros, and both of them are exquisite. So I'm gonna get to eating and I'm gonna end the video here. Guys, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and let's get lost again in the next one.